So I am logged in to Remedy Forest as a staff user. So I have a, a license here to do this. And this is my opening dashboard that I'm looking at. I've elected to only have one view, quick view, for those of you who are familiar with SDE showing. But I could certainly you know, organize it to where I had two or three panes of information showing here. But I, would, I had it at one just to make sure that everybody could uh, see this in this webinar type of environment. And over on the uh, left-hand side is really the things that I'm allowed to do based on my, my credentials that I have as someone using the system. And as you can see, what we provide for that one single monthly uh, cost factor is the ability for you to uh, create and view and update incidents. And then we'll look at all of these. Uh, to create, view, and update tasks, which were referred to as work orders. For those of you familiar with the old Service Desk Express system, task is more along the lines of following the ITIL terminology, so that's why we changed that. Uh, you certainly have the ability to look at broadcast and so forth. You can see I have a scrolling message going across the top of my screen letting me know that a BlackBerry server is down to uh, know that if we start getting uh, calls. I obviously have the ability to search. Uh, and the one thing about this that's very nice is it's built on ITIL v3 best practices. So for all of the different modules that I'm in, uh, as we go through here, there is a, a, a complete set of workflows and documentation as to how do you handle an incident. What are the steps that you go through? Here's the description. Here's kind of the flow of what's going on. And on any one of these, if I need to, as I go in here, I can actually you know, look and see and, and, and drill down to get more information about what a given step may be, again, even with additional information provided for me. So there's this type of documentation available for incident management and for the other modules that, uh, that we're going to uh, discuss momentarily. So in addition to incident management, uh, we also uh, brought out in one of the earlier releases, we added problem management and change management to the solution. Uh, and we'll go through what each one of these does and how they are configured. But it does give you a very complete service management solution here to handle your break fixes through incidents, your service requests through tasking, your uh, level three, level four investigations tying incidents to problem investigations, and then ultimately coming in and uh, uh, creating change where we may have to to uh, resolve some ongoing issue. And of course, configuration management, your configuration items, if you would, that are in your underlying CMDB are used both in the incident module as well as the problem module as well as the, uh, as well as the change module here. So let's just go in and uh, and and take a look. Let's just go in and create an incident from scratch. I'll kind of show you the, the worst case scenario uh, that we've got here. So we'll bring up a, a standard template. And this is, I mean, a standard form out of the box here. And so the first thing that you would typically do would be you would identify who the end user that you're talking with is. And of course, if you didn't know the particular name, you could just come in and you know grab the uh, grab the given person there from your drop down list. And as is typical with most systems, you know, what are you calling about today, sir? And, you know, have them come in and, and basically, you know, based on what they say, I can select a category of uh, issue that they're doing. And then, of course, uh, you know, I describe, uh, you know, what their issue is uh, that they're having there. And then I can, based on that, I can come over and start to say, well, this seems like it's kind of localized to just uh, uh, just that the impact's pretty low because it's localized to this one individual, so I'll just keep it at a at a, a low impact and a low urgency, which then would automatically compute once we save the record what our anticipated due date and time would be based on the rules that you've set up or the service levels that you've set up based on uh, that impact and uh, and that urgency. Then, as I go to continue to work on this ticket, of course. Now that they've described what the issue is, if I can continue to work on it and provide some value, I will do that. I do have the ability, of course, to go in and assign it to an additional staff member or group if it's something beyond uh, my control here. And so now is where I would start collecting more data and recording uh, activity that I'm going to do as I uh, go through and try to resolve this issue. I have more details, of course, about the client. 
if this is a ticket where I think I ought to be linking an underla underlying configuration item, so they had been calling in about their laptop or a service or whatever, I would certainly uh, I would certainly be able to do that. So if I wanted to link my configuration item, uh, I could there. Uh, if I then uh, want to go in and start to capture some more detail or maybe even ask for assistance here, notice, of course, that anything that I do is going to be date and time stamped uh, right in the system so that we've got an audit trail of exactly who did what when, when things got changed or added would be there. I have the ability, uh, as I'm looking at this, of course, to go in and add additional tasks if I need to reach out to another group to assist me as I go through and do this uh, ticket, I can open up a task. You'll see that it automatically links it, of course, back to the original incident uh, that was there. And I would just, you know, ask them to, you know, go out and do something on my behalf to assist in this, uh, uh, in this investigation uh, that we're doing here. And then I would then assign this unique thing I'm asking over to the person or the group who had the uh, the wherewithal to do that type of level, I would save that out. And of course, that would show up in that person's work queue. They would also receive an email notification letting them know that an additional task had been assigned uh, to them. If I go back over and look at my incident, you can now see that, that I'm showing that a task has been opened and assigned to somebody. And obviously, we'll, we'll follow that, uh, that through. I, of course, may also need to send out an email that's related to this particular incident. And if I want to do that, uh, you know, I can send that to a number of uh, people. I see I'll send that to myself, actually, just so you can see what happens. Um, star. So that uh, we get some information back. And, you know, once we, uh, and maybe I perhaps even want to add an attachment there if I need to, to that outbound email. And ultimately, I'll send that out. And again, that would be that would be documented uh, down in my system here of additional things that went on. Here you'll see where my Outlook is giving me a, a notice here that an incident has just been created, and I've been notified uh, of that as I go through there. So again, this complete uh, auditing of what's going on, any tasks that happen here, the, the history of exactly what's happened. There's my outbound email. You can see it, it's a very thorough system as far as what may uh, be happening here. And since this is a very integrated solution, if this incident needed to kick off a change request for something that needed to be done, software needed to be installed, or a patch needed to be tested or something, I could actually kick that off from right here if, uh, you know, if it were uh, appropriate. So just trying to give you a, a general sense there. The other thing as a staff member I can do here is I've got, as you remember from the slide deck, I've got a more expanded search. So let's say I go over and I type in that I need some information about Blackberries. What you will find that it's going to return to me is it's going to return information that if we've got any documents in our frequently asked questions field, it's going to show me there where the where Blackberry was applicable. If there are any open incidents where BlackBerry was part of the description, it will show me those incidents. If there are any work orders or tasks that are out there that are associated with BlackBerry descriptions, it will do those as well. And of course, then in addition, it will leverage just you know the normal Google-like searches to bring me back uh, information from the uh, uh, from the internet on whatever I typed here in my task thing. So a very rich search that combines the local knowledge, i.e. what's within your service desk database, as well as leveraging the entire uh, universe of other uh, knowledgeable information that may be about that, uh, that particular one. You know, SFP, of course, is always giving me feedback on how many incidents I have, how many tasks are assigned, you know, how many change requests I'm involved in, problem investigations I'm involved in. So one of the, one of the smart designs they have here here is you really aren't popping a lot of new forms and fields. Everything is really addressable right from this single page here as far as what you're, uh, as what you're trying to do. So if we pop over here to uh, problem management and talk a little bit about that, uh, problem management, of course, is typically where you are investigating a recurrence of incidents or you, issues have been coming in. And maybe we don't know what's been causing them. Typically, you try to look for a workaround. But if we go and look at this one that I've already created, 
you'll kind of get a sense of what we're uh, what we're doing here. So I created a problem investigation that said, uh, you know, where we've got a whole number of incidents out there where people have been complaining about some, uh, you know, some categorization here. And again, you could put that to whatever whatever was applicable there uh, within your uh, within your organization there. And I'll go on and save that. And then, of course, you know, I described uh, exactly what the issue was that we're trying to uh, resolve here. You'll notice that I said that that came from incidents. We're down in my detailed section. I, as the problem manager, I had gone out and looked at incidents over the past 30 days and grabbed those that seemed to be applicable to my description of the issues going on here, and I've linked those uh, to what this investigation was. I've uh, also, as I do this, if it would be applicable for me to uh, link a configuration item that's part of this investigation, I have the ability to do that. Or if I wanted to uh, assign a task off to somebody in the networking group to uh, you know, check a connection or something, I'm going to maintain control of the problem, but I might get assistance. Just like in the incidents I could spawn off of a task, the same thing is true with the problem management that I could, uh, I could do that. I could include any number of uh, documents that may be applicable to this investigation that, uh, that we have going on here. And ultimately, I'm going to try to get to the known error and indicate what the resolution would be. And, and probably 90% of the time, that's going to result in me creating the change request you know, right from within the record, because I'm going to probably have to make an infrastructure change or perhaps a patch or a modification uh, to an application. And so it's just a matter of creating it from within the problem record, which will then automatically uh, launch my, uh, my change request as far as what I'm going to do. And if you go through and you, you kind of look, uh, look at your change request, there are a number of different things that uh, you can do here. Uh, first off, who is you know, creating the, the uh, change? And then when you get into change management, you start thinking about the uh, impact of the change, the risk of doing the change on a given date and time. So generally, one of the first things you'll do is think about, well, when should, now that I know what we need to do, right, when should we go out there and, uh, and make, a, uh, make a particular change here? So actually, I'm going to go in and pull up one that I've already created that I've got some, uh, I've got some good data here, and then you folks don't have to watch me sit here and type. So here I have a change request that uh, where we've identified through a known error that we need to apply a particular security patch. And I picked a date and time that I was going to do that, but the way I determined what an appropriate date and time was, was the first thing I did was I went out and I looked at my forward schedule of changes to make sure that I wasn't going to schedule this change over top of another change or some kind of system outage that we had already put into our calendar. So that's one of the first tools that uh, you make available to yourself. And then the other thing that you would, uh, you would typically do in, in that environment is you would come in and think about, well, who do we need to notify about this change? Who do we need to get some uh, information from? So you'll notice in my detailed section here, I sent out a number of change assessments, or I believe in this case I sent out one, but I created a change assessment related to this particular change and I went out and through a notification, through an email notification, this particular person is going to be notified that a new change is out there. It's, a, it's an emergency type of change and what we're having to do, why we're having to do it, and ask this person to comment on either the technical, the financial, or the business risk and any other comments they might want to put you know, as it would pertain to their role within the organization. 